Good morning, friends. It's always a pleasure to be here. This is my third Vision Summit. I remember coming the first time in 2011. And I think I was again here in 2013, and this is the third time I'm here. And every time, I, I think it's been a revolution of all the activities that have been going on in Bangalore, in all the activities which members of IESA have been doing. And to be part of these exciting activities which you do and amaze not only in Bangalore, not only in India, but across the world. So a big hand for all of you in Bangalore. <clears throat> Friends, I am actually like a uh, fossil in the Department of Electronics and IT, one of the longer serving uh, officers in the department. But you know, it's been an exciting journey. And I really feel the excitement of what is happening around us. In 2012, when we started the effort to recreate, literally from zilch, the electronic sector industry in the country, to now the Digital India program, which encompasses within it the electronics manufacturing effort. Also, it's really making you feel the, feel the pulse of what is uh, changing in the country. I think the Digital India program has given a new life, a new drive, a new opportunity for electronic sector. Let me give you some of the, you know, things which, the way things have changed and why I say it's exciting times for all of us. <laughs> Last year, between December 2014 and December 2015, we added 100 million internet connections in the country, more than any other country in the world. <laughs> but more interestingly, the previous 100 million was added in 18 months, as against 12 months for this 100 million. From 100 to 200, we had gone in three years. And for the first 100, it took maybe 15 years before that. It's all escalating and accelerating very fast spirally. E-commerce has been growing at a frantic pace. But more interestingly, e-commerce is not only growing in rural, in urban areas, it's growing equally fast in rural and semi-urban areas. We grew roughly at 67% last year uh, in the e-commerce sector. We added smart, 100 million smartphones last year in the country. Previous year, we had added 80 million smartphones. And the year before that, we had added 40 million smartphones. The pace at which it is increasing is continuously going up. And we are adding and le Indian Electronic Semiconductor Association in terms of electronics manufacturing unit in the last one year. I understand there are about 100, 150 members in the electronics hardware sector in the association. Last year alone, 159 units with plans of roughly 70, 16, 16 and a half billion dollars of investment in electronics manufacturing sector came into the country. If you look at the e-governance, the adoption of technology in the country, <clears throat> last year, every month, there were 55 crore, 550 million e-gov transactions per month as against 29 million in the year 2014. If this is not change, I think we, uh, we cannot find faster change than this. All of this, if you look at, what are we talking about? And let me give you another forward-looking futuristic figure. To me, the technology sector in which all of you are in the next 
five to seven years is a one trillion dollar opportunity. <laughs> one trillion dollars. You're talking of 400 billion dollars of hardware, about 350 billion dollars of IT, ITS, and e commerce, and another 250 dollars or so of telecommunication and IoT industry. Roughly one trillion dollar. This sector will contribute something between 20 to 25 in between electronics, IT, and communication is going to contribute nearly 20 to 25 percent of the GDP of this country. And that is the opportunity, that is a sector which we here are all participating in. <clears throat> what is this sector can uh, otherwise be proud of? <clears throat> We have seen the Micromaxes and the Lavas and the Spices and the Carbons create billion dollar companies in few years in this country. We have seen the Snap Deals and the Flipkarts and the, of the world to have created retail e-commerce giants, again billion dollar plus companies. We have seen the Paytms and the Practos and the Inmobis and the Olas and the Food Pandas create dot com companies and grow. What it has shown is the opportunity to realize the potential of Indian dream in this country in this era, which was never possible earlier. And I totally agree with Mr. R.K. Mishra, who said earlier that today it is possible to actually create companies and grow them so fast that they could match and be competitive in the rest of the world. <clears throat> what, is, what are some of the things that government is doing? There are a lot of things that are changing, but government is also trying to further spur the ecosystem One of the biggest challenges is to ensure that the benefits of digital technology, the benefits of technology reach every nook and corner of the country, every village of the country, every remotest part of the country. Today, that from the electronics hardware perspective, on a very macro basis, <clears throat> except mobile phone, we are, our penetration levels are typically six to 10% of the population. <clears throat> Whether you look at laptops, tablets, computers, televisions, refrigerators, washing machines, or any other consumer uh, medical uh, personal devices. Whereas in comparable countries, this is 60 to 100 percent of the population. This is the opportunity. But what, we, what needs to be done is what happened to the mobile industry which has actually been able to make that grip, uh, bridge that gap. It requires innovation, it requires affordability, and then the market of the whole country would reach. But coming back, so to ensure that we have larger inclusion and the vision of having the whole country be part of this digital change, digital empowerment, Government is now enhancing the Common Service Citizen Program. I'm not talking of NOFN, you all know about NOFN, but Common Citizen Service Program I want started sometime back for five years. It was slowly picking up. But what I want to mention today, given the fact that the adoption of technology is increasing in rural areas, when government said we will increase the number of CSCs from 100,000 to 250,000, one for every panchayat, when the first 100,000 was given, there was funding support from the government. 
when few months back we said we are going to now cover the remaining panchayats where there are no CSCs, we said there will be no funding support. You come and set it up as a business opportunity. And I'm so happy to say that in the last two months itself, 38,000 new CSCs have come up in panchayats where there were no CSCs. VLEs have come forward and set up these CSCs, showing that the demand is today getting generated at the village level. We are on cusp of creating models of technology delivery in the country. We have today created biometric identity for 950 million people, a cradle to grave identity, which is unique, lifelong, authenticable on a real-time basis. We have created the digital locker ecosystem, which allows people to be put their documents, enables government authorities to put the documents relating to citizens in their, in their digital lockers, so that people can share these documents when someone else wants these documents. We are all aware that every time you apply for a job, every time you need uh, a gas connection or electricity connection, a whole list of documents have to be produced. And those have to be attested by a government servant or a notary, which becomes itself a drudgery in itself. The digital locker will take away that drudgery. And that system has been created where the concerned government authorities push the documents relating to the citizens, and the citizen can share these documents on will. And we have created the e-sign infrastructure, which enables citizens to authenticate online at marginal, negligible marginal cost, so that there is no cost to the citizen when he has to authenticate. Today, you can do it using a digital signature. But we all know that the adoption of digital signature has continued to be largely in the upper middle class and middle class segments for applications which are used by them. And therefore, if we want this to happen to 1.25 billion people using real-time authentication, we need a different technology. eSign provides that uh, technology. And these three things, each of which in the technology area where India has taken the leadership, give us the opportunity to actually reach out to each of to the 1.25 billion people. But friends, these 1.25 billion people cannot be done by government alone. Aadhaar 950 million was achieved because there was a whole ecosystem of enrollment agencies which exist even today and support the Aadhaar generation and maintenance. <clears throat> Today, there is a system of a, uh, authentication user agencies and know your uh, customer user agencies in Aadhaar. Similarly, the, while the digital locker system has been started, the government is now in process of creating an ecosystem for digital locker providers, which will enable partners to set up digital locker services similar to the DMAT services provided by depositories for shares, so that we, these services can reach out to the large number of people in a short time. E-sign providers, similar to the digital signature certificate providers, ecosystem is being created. All this can be created and will, is being created with the support of industry partners. And each of these opportunities is going to further escalate the requirement of hardware that goes behind it. 